This is where it's at, kids. More on that funky stuff a little bit later on. Um, we're talking about the vaccination rollout this morning. Mark says, I've, I've had both of my vaccinations, both at Ellen Road. No problems. I've had no symptoms. Morning to Danny in Otley says, I've been called up for my second vaccine, booked in at my local surgery later this morning. I had my first one 10 weeks ago. Um, no ill effects after. Uh, I had the AstraZeneca one as well. I was in and out in three minutes, three minutes, and I'm 57, says Danny in July. Uh, morning to Keithy Boy uh, in Wakefield who says me and the wife had our first vaccine no problem very well organised at our local doctors second vaccine May the 12th um I think the vaccine is a, a better alternative than a hospital bed, uh, says Keithy Boy in Wakefield. Good morning to you. Hundreds, if not thousands more people are getting their COVID vaccines in West Yorkshire today alone. And it's having a clear impact. The infection rate across the country remains relatively low and hospital admissions are falling. Another 60 million Pfizer jabs are coming in the autumn to help combat any potential next wave. Now, this plan was announced by the health secretary at yesterday's Downing Street news conference. This is Matt Hancock. I'm delighted to be able to tell you that we've secured a further 60 million doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine that will be used alongside others as part of our booster shot program later this year. And that is all about protecting the progress that we've made. It's not yet clear if this third jab will simply be another dose of the current shot or whether the boosters will be tweaked, to use a very unmedical term, to deal with new COVID variants. England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer Jonathan Van Tam says there could still be a third wave of the virus before the end of the year, but the UK is currently making good progress in controlling infections. We are really in very low levels that are comparable to where we were in September last year. Um, we're running as a typical seven-day average at just over 2,000 people testing positive per day. My sense is that probably we are at or close to the bottom at the moment in terms of this level of disease in the UK. It was a busy day uh, yesterday for announcements surrounding the pandemic. The government said that international travellers will be able to use an NHS smartphone app to demonstrate their COVID vaccination and testing status. Some experts say that vaccine passports could be required for years. Let's speak to Lewis James Davis, CEO of VST Enterprises, a cyber technology company just over the border in Manchester. His firm has been developed developing a vaccine passport. Morning, Lewis. Hi, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. What can you tell us about these latest proposals then that came out? Yeah, was it Grant Shapps, the, the Transport Secretary, who was speaking? Yeah, so we, we've been working on the V-Health passport since last, last year. We launched it in June last year, and we've been active in 80 countries. And one of our main things is it is a health passport, not just a vaccine passport. And the main focus is making an interoperable passport that can be read globally, which if we have an isolated NHS system, that looks highly unlikely if we launched it just through the NHS. Right. So this is something that involves technology, involves uh, being very open. Does, does it address the concern? I mean, the major two concerns you hear people have about this are privacy and, and perhaps the ethical side of these things. How do you sort of get around those two? Yeah, so we've been working hard on, on the data privacy. It's, it's privacy by design. We've got all of the ISO certification and GDPR certification, and we have had to bear in mind other countries' policies too in terms of where the data is stored and how it can be transferred across different states and countries. Uh, in terms of uh, the other part, we've got the, the board and the results come in in June, which will be pushed forward by the UK government. But obviously, different countries have different ways of pushing that data out. Are you then fixed on the idea that this is going to happen? This isn't a question of if we get vaccine passports. It's a question of when. Yeah, it is a question of when. And we're dealing with other countries where our passport will be the mainframe for that country and allow other countries to read it as, as easily as they do a, a standard passport. So we've built this for longevity we haven't just thought this is COVID-19 and that's it we're working with other pharmacies in the UK and beyond where they're adding things like malaria uh, jabs yellow fever jabs etc so when they go on to things like cruise ships 
they've got all of the jabs in one place and the user is free to share what they need to. And what about anybody who's not tech savvy? Because you mentioned cruise ships. I'm talking, uh, ve- I'm using really broad brush stereotypes here, uh, Lewis. So do forgive me, but there's a chance there might be people of a, a certain age, perhaps doing certain types of cruises who might not have smartphones, might not have the internet, might want to be a bit more old fashioned, dare I even say, in how they do things. What, what will happen to them? Yeah, so we've took that into account. We've tried our best to facilitate for everybody you don't actually even need an email address to get a passport in our system a a gp could issue a certificate that you can print off and take with you and the cruise liners could just scan it when you arrive so we do have that it's under a a thing called facilities in our platform and you can be issued it you don't even need a smartphone so you can just take your paper certificate or a lanyard and be scanned on arrival from when then i sort of said this is going to be when not if when do you think it will be that we will we'll all need one of these so i think in the summer from the uk you'll definitely need one we've been talking to cruise liners since last year and they're aiming for may uh, to start accepting them on there airlines already accept our passport globally uh, so you can use that there thanks for talking to us Lewis James Davis, CEO of VST Enterprises, a cyber tech company who've been developing a vaccine passport. Which is-